Okay, well, thank you, Helen, and um, welcome, everybody. My name's Jane Harvey, and like Helen, I'm a, a trustee of AWL. And I'm here tonight because um, I, for the last two years, I've had, um, well, it was a great pleasure of working with Risha and Nadine on our Elapsed project. If you don't know about it, it stands for Embedding Languages Across Primary and Secondary Education. I'm sure Richard will be telling you, but all our free resources are, are posted on the LFE website. And so you, you go and have a look and you'll find all kinds of ready to go um, lessons for you to embed into your, um, in, to embed into your language lessons. So it's a great pleasure um, for me to uh, welcome tonight Nadine Frez and Richard Talleron, who are going to talk to us about that very subject, embedding languages. Richard, Nadine, over to you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Oh, Nadine. Oui, Richard. Fancy meeting you here tonight. Oui, Bonsoir. Oui, Bonsoir. <laughs> Where are you now? Je suis en Bretagne. I'm in oh. Brittany. Oh, Brittany. Yes. God, what's the weather like in Brittany? Uh, well, at the moment, I don't know. It's too dark to tell. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it was wet today, unfortunately. <laughs> Okay, well, sun was shining in Edinburgh, but I don't need to tell people that because everybody knows. Okay, everybody, so we will spend 55 minutes together, um, and we are very much looking forward to it. Uh, Richard, my name is Richard. I live in Edinburgh, so my friends here call me a Richard, usually. That's, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm between the two countries, really, and the two languages and the two cultures, Scotland, English-speaking, and, and French, and France. Um, how about you, Nadine? Do you want to say a few things about yourself before we start? Um, well, I've been involved with um, in language or anything with languages, language teaching, language development resources um, for a long time. Uh, I've worked across a number of continents and still very excited about sharing um, language uh, methodology and skills and practical ideas. And I hope that tonight we'll be able to um, to share a number of ideas and discuss ideas together in a difficult time. Absolutely. So everything we are showing tonight will be available to you. We'll give you an, an email address that you can you can send an email to, and we'll we'll share the resources with you. Everything we're we're going to be showing tonight, we can share with you. Um, we will. It's going to be a very practical session. So we'll start with practical ideas, and then probably 15, 20 minutes into the presentation, we'll ask for professional feedback, professional dialogue, you know, all of us thinking together. It's wonderful. We've got, we have people from America, Africa, uh, continental Europe, the United Kingdom, and other parts of the world. So let's put all of this together. You will have to use the chat function for that, but that's that's okay, and we'll ask you to, to join in and take part as well as much as, as possible using the chat function. Everything we're presenting tonight will be uh, in French. We'll use French, but even if you do not speak about the French, pas de problème. You will be able to follow um, what, what we are presenting. We hope so anyway, and if not, please tell us. Uh, embedding languages um, across the curriculum. This is very much both Nadine and I work for a company called Paralanguage, and we've been supporting um, uh, the Scottish government one plus two policy on languages for 10 years now, eight, nine years um, now. And part of our job is really to support teachers in a very practical way by developing resources for them to use directly in class. We develop something one night, the following morning teachers use it and teach. Now, one of the best ways we found of supporting these sometimes non-specialist primary teachers, some of them might not speak good French or good Spanish or good German. Um, so one of, the, one of the good ways we found of supporting them, quite apart from the language side of things, is to develop resources which they can then use directly within their curriculum, their learning context, we see here in, in Scotland. Um, so we'll... Without further ado, we'll start with some um, resources that we've taken from different documents that we've developed uh, over the years, um, and then we'll reflect uh, together. C'est bon, Aline? Bon, on y va. Je partage euh, écran. mon écran. Oui. Okay. Alors, share 
without the sound just now. So of course, as Nadine said, the, the, you know, the days at the moment are pretty tricky, <laughs> difficult days for everybody. Uh, so emotional check, something we do in Scottish schools and I'm sure schools all over the, the world. Um, and so how to embed that uh, as part of your, you know, teaching French or Spanish or whatever the language really you're teaching. Everybody's done. Bonjour, comment ça va? Comment ça va, Nadine? Ça va bien, merci. Et toi, Richard, ça okay. va bien? Ça va bien, ça va comme ci, comme ça, ça va todo bien, gracias. We, very quickly, we can go um, a bit further. I mean, it's fine to do that as part of your daily che check. Uh, you can do it in English, of course, but then in French, but it's nice to go a bit further than that. So, um, comment ça va, Nadine? Ah non, ça c'est pour moi. Je suis content. Je suis content. Can you repeat there in the background in your own house? Je suis <laughs> content. Ah, mais moi, je suis contente. Ah, Nadine, je suis contente. contente. Show me your face. What's your oui. face when je suis contente? Je suis contente. OK, je suis contente. Eh bien, moi, je suis super content. Je suis super content. Et moi, je suis super contente. Super contente. Just feel free to repeat in your, as I said, home. Make sure there's nobody behind uh, listening in. Uh, je suis triste. Oh non. Je suis triste. Oh Et toi, comment ça va? Et moi aussi, je suis, je suis très triste. Ah <laughs> je suis triste. On est tous les deux tristes. Um, quelquefois, <laughs> quelquefois, évidemment. Oh, je suis en colère. Je suis en colère. Et toi, Nadine? Et moi aussi, je suis en colère. Je suis en colère. OK. Euh, euh, quelle heure il est en Bretagne Il est 9 heures et je suis fatigué. OK. So these are all the emotions of fatigue for Nadine, fatigue for me, emotions that our learners go through in the morning and the evening. We as teachers do. We were talking to Helen. She said, oh, je suis fatigué. I said, Helen, yes, absolutely. Je suis fatigué. Could we, some of you will be teaching online at the moment and some of you will be teaching in school. Um, I mean, even online, you could play a little game just based on, on these um, little slides and little emotions. We've just selected a few, four or five. Okay, we're not going to spend too much time on this, but and then we'll move on. But je suis fatigué. Could we play the little game of the miming game? Nadine, do you want to show us your face? And then we'll ask people to type in their um, in chat, see if you can guess what... Um, okay, face. Je making. suis. Okay, can I see? Could you people type up quickly? Which emotion is this? Ouais, c'est bien. C'est bien la classe. Uh, okay, I'm sharing my screen so I can't see what people are saying. Content, Did we guess? Bravo, Did bravo content? tout le monde. Exactement. 13, 14, 15. Wow, plenty. I can see plenty. Okay, people. Richard, et toi? Ah, wow. Tu es comment? <laughs> Oh, Richard mm. n'est pas content. Non. Richard est super. Oui, ouais, super la classe. Richard est en colère. Ouais, je suis en super colère. vénère, oui. <rire> je suis vénère. C'est vrai, c'est vrai, il est vénère. Ok, so. Nadine, you can see, because I'm sharing my screen, I can't see what people are writing just now. And I've got full presentation. So let me know if there's anything I should, yes. should know. Is that right? Uh, OK, donc je suis fatigué. Je suis... Oh, I forgot. Je suis nerveux. Tu peux mimer, je suis nerveux, Nadine? Oui. oui. Je suis <laughs> nerveuse. C'est les examens. Je suis nerveuse. OK. So, maybe the first step, comment ça va? Muy bien, gracias. Uh, mal. Ça va bien, ça va mal. Second step, potentially, these emotions. Triste, fatigué. Okay. Uh, but maybe the third step would be uh, moi. <laughs> triste. <laughs> uh, I, I am in my uh, office tonight because I've got a good internet connection, but there's nobody else, of course. Uh, there would be nobody else anyway. Je me sens seul. Je me sens seul. Oui, c'est triste. C'est triste. Oui. 
Mais quand je me sens seul, euh, je bois un verre de, <rire> de Beaujolais nouveau, un petit. Non, je, je, je fais une promenade. Quand je me sens seul, je fais une promenade. Tu peux taper, Sanadine, pour oui. hein? So you could ask your learners what they do when they feel some of these feelings that we've, we've mentioned. So, for example, moi, quand je me sens seul, could you repeat that at home? Quand je me sens seul, je fais une promenade. Quand je me sens seul, je fais une promenade. Euh, Nadine, oui, you, said you, you said you were a bit tired. Oui. Quand, tu, quand tu es fatigué, qu'est-ce que oui. tu fais quand tu es fatigué Quand je suis fatigué, je regarde un film à la télé. Et tu t'endors Non. So when Nadine is tired, she watches TV. Could you tell us what you do when, you're, when you feel lonely or tired? Or, and please use the language that you teach or the language you, you don't have to use French. Nadine will read <laughs> all these languages for us. Quand je suis fatigué, je fais une promenade. Quand je me sens seul, je regarde la télé. Je duermo. <laughs> Quand je suis fatigué, je dors. <laughs> ouais, ok, that's je good. Je dors, oui. Ouais, ouais. You can use different emotions quand je me sens heureux. Je fais content. de la peinture, un go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Mais voy à la cama. Okay. Quand je me sens seul, je joue okay. du piano. Very good. Je fais un super webinaire. Bravo Géraldine. <rire> 10 points pour Géraldine. Oui. Je fais la sieste. OK, so maybe that's a nice way of introducing some, some new vocab, but quite relevant vocab to, to the learners, you know, which goes beyond ça va bien, ça va comme ci, comme ça, which is also fine and which you also want to introduce, of course. Anything else there, Nadine, before I... Um, no, well, again, as you mentioned, it's really a, a, an easy way, um, straight away to embed things that you would normally do in English in, um, in L2 or L3. Um, and, uh, and we, we said, I mean, we don't know um, if you want to play games. Um, so your learners online could mime as we did. Um, if they need to get used to wearing masks, uh, we've played the game of, uh, of actually um, trying to guess what the mood is behind the mask or uh, draw a face on the mask and also ask uh, peers to to say what the emotion is. Absolutely. So there's a number of games that you could play with that. If you have other ideas, please share in the chat. And in five, 10 minutes, we'll, we'll, we'll want to show you a couple more, two, three, four more things, and then we can have this professional dialogue there. Uh, so when Nadid and I worked on this health and well-being, we've got a full dossier on health and well-being, but also we thought we would link it to la francophonie, la francophonie, French-speaking country, of course, could be Spanish-speaking countries. Uh, and we'll show you how we did this in a very simple way as well. So emotions, and we created something on, oh, I need, oh, you don't need the sound anyway. Yeah. No. There is sound, but it's probably better if you don't get it. Nadine, tu peux lire la première phrase? Oui. Salut, je m'appelle Alice. J'habite à Montréal, au Canada. Je suis canadienne. J'ai 17 ans. Quand je suis en colère, je joue au tennis. Okay. But you better be careful with that racket. Oui. <laughs> Quand je suis en colère, je joue au tennis. Okay. Uh, let me now go. To, that was Alice. We did the same thing. So using texting story, we'll discuss um, that as well. Aurélien, should I read Aurélien? Yes, then? please do. 
Okay. Bonjour, je m'appelle Aurélien. We have friends from Belgium. J'habite à Bruxelles, en Belgique. Je suis belge. J'ai 12 ans. Et quand je suis fatigué, comme Nadine, je regarde la télé. Je regarde la télé. OK, let me go back. Whoops. Uh, um, so, that was a way for us to start introducing la francophonie. So, how do people from French-speaking countries feel and what do they do uh, when some of these emotions, when they're tired, when they, when they, whoops, when they're bored, you can't hear the sound, no, that's good. So you've heard Aurélien, or you've seen, you've read, I should say, Aurélien. Mm. Another way of presenting Aurélien is through a PowerPoint. Again, as I said, we'll share these resources and you can um, edit them if you want to change the language. Uh, but we also have on and Salut, je m'appelle Tanvi. Oops, I went too fast. J'habite à Pondichéry en Inde. Je suis indienne. J'ai 13 ans. Quand je suis triste, je parle avec ma meilleure copine. Okay. I like Tanvi. Alice, Alice. with. Yeah, we know. Uh, we've got Abdou. Abdou. Vas-y, Nadine. Bonjour, je m'appelle Abdou. J'habite à Dakar au Sénégal. Je suis sénégalais. J'ai 11 ans. Quand je suis content, je joue au foot avec mes copains. D'accord. Et Yara au Liban. Bonjour, je m'appelle Yara, j'habite à Beyrouth au Liban, je suis libanaise, j'ai 10 ans et... What is Yara going to share with us? Quand je me sens seul, je téléphone à ma grand-mère. That's nice. That's nice. OK, I'm going to stop sharing now. Ah, I can see now. Uh, I'm stealing it from my class, says uh, Lisa. Oh, no. um, okay, could we now have a little think about this little introduction or these little resources that we've uh, we've been looking at? Is this embedding? How? If so, how is this doable in your in your school, wherever you are? working with pupils or, or teachers. And keeping in mind the, the cross-curricular element as well, maybe from what we've um, looked at, just looked at. Jane, have you got something or are you reading? No, I thought Jane had something to say, but, um, and also which areas of the curriculum you could say, have we been targeting with these little activities? Okay, so it's over to you, everybody. Okay, so Lisa said it shows the importance of listening to how people speak as well as their words. Okay, Emotion, emotions activity is very useful. I'll be doing that tomorrow. Thank you, Lisa. Yes. Are you working online at the moment, Lisa, or are you teaching in class? And yes, it's, the, it's part of the health and well-being, absolutely. Yes. Okay, somebody says, my friend is a brown owl and asked me to record some phrases in a language the brownie wouldn't know. Okay, so yeah, using emotions to, to just share a feeling. Absolutely. Oh, it's checking French, yes. Lisa, Lisa is teaching online, uh, but you have the bubble, okay. Helen, I forgot to mute, yes. Huh. So yes, this is for the check-ins in the morning. Um, doesn't have to be in the morning. Sometimes it can be the afternoon, of course, when somebody's tired uh, um, and you can see there's something maybe wrong happening. That might be a nice way of getting that, that learner uh, on board by starting in French or Spanish or whatever the language. Any other reactions? I mean, do you, do, do, which of these resources did you think yeah that's i like that or i would change that you saw we have sunfires on the powerpoint this is really to support non-specialist teachers 
for the francophonie document. <clears throat> yes, so the francophonie document, we, we um, try to cover all the continents where uh, French is represented as an official uh, language or, um, or still, still has a strong uh, presence. And so we included uh, maps um, so that learners could do some further research as to where that country is. And maybe we'll mention later about um, the fact that we link that to the rights of the child. And again, a possible further extension for with uh, older learners. Yeah. Okay, bring la francophonie, geography, yes. Uh, they're enjoying my lessons at the moment if they're in school and they're learning with the children. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with sports too. Yes, again, I mean, linking um, emotions to an activity, that's a good way to extend beyond just saying um, how you feel. But what is good about embedding? I mean, why should we embed? Why do we think that this has helped teachers, uh, you know, the fact that the resources we develop, they just integrate, they just use in their, as part of the curriculum, as part of the learning context. Could somebody maybe type something? Yes. I know it's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like the francophonie document. Uh, key okay, make the children want to communicate. Yeah, Geraldine. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know with, whether um, in some other parts of the world other than Scotland, there's been the same uh, problematic with the confinement of saying that we give priorities to some areas of the curriculum and languages might suffer from that. So is there something we can do to make sure it doesn't happen? Yeah, there's plenty of great stuff um, coming there. Uh, it shows you're interested in the learners. Yes, it's relevant to their world. Uh, in a way, the language you said L2, Nadine, that's a technical Scottish term. That means the first additional language. Um, and um, in a way, uh, L2 is not just an add-on, but it's part of what you do every day. OK. Do we go to Egypt? Yes, let's go to, let's change. Uh, <laughs> let's change continue. the subject now. Uh, the, we chose e Egypt because somebody asked us to work on this fairly recently. And also you might have noticed that they've discovered new, as Nadine says, because her English is a bit wobbly, a new mummies in uh, Saqqara. What did you mean exactly by new mummies, uh, Nadine? Well, not daddies, but oh. mummies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Um, so, yes, we, um, there's been a lot of emphasis on new discoveries in Egypt recently. And, um, and, and a, a teacher in Scotland who's teaching early primary wanted to do a topic on um, Egypt linked to the pyramids. And so our mission was to develop something which was not going to take too long, not go too much in depth, but yet um, emphasize key vocabulary around um, ancient Egypt. Okay. So again, maybe a nice way of starting this would be uh, l'Egypte. Can we do a bit of uh, remue-ménage? Can we have a little think, you know? L'Egypte in your own language, whether it's whatever the language, what are the key words? If you're maybe, if you're an eight, nine year old brainstorming, yeah, Thierry, I can see you there. Hello, sorry, Thierry. Um, what would be the key words if you're teaching L'Egypte? Yeah, les pyramides, absolument. <laughs> what else? Come on, river. river. Yes, which river? Which one? <laughs> Mummies. Mummies. Pharaohs. Yes, pharaohs. Sacrifices. Yes. Arena. Cameos. Pharaohs, yes. Civilization. <laughs> River Nile. Yes, yes, yes. 
sand. Crocodiles. Treasure. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, you win. I think you all win. <laughs> Civilization. Champollion. Champollion yes. Trop fort. Trop, 30 points, Thierry. <laughs> Delta, yes. Delta. Okay, so this was for early primary, you said, Nadine. Can yes. I just share a little yes. uh, animation that we've produced? Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Can you hear the sound? No. Not yet. Yes? No. No. Apologies, I got it wrong again. Um, So whilst Richard is organizing, maybe you can all try and think of what's going to come. So look at the images. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. one thing we did not, did not mention in the, with the pyramids. On you go, Nadine. Yeah. Yeah, somebody Antique. mentioned the pyramid. Yeah, yeah, no, but there's something else there. Oh, yes. Yes. What is next to the pyramid? Yeah, yeah the Sphinx, yes. <laughs> wow. Le Nil. Lovely pictures there. Le Nil mesure 6670 km. Les pyramides. Voici les pyramides des pharaons. Elles sont en pierre. Il y a des petites pyramides et des pyramides très hautes et très grandes aussi. Okay, please do pay attention because there's a quiz coming up. Mm. <laughs> Your way. Le sphinx. Okay. This video is for eight year old learners. Voici le sphinx oh, de Gizeh. Il mesure 73 mètres de long et 20 mètres de haut. Le sphinx a un corps de lion. Le lion représente le pouvoir et la force physique. Le sphinx a une tête d'homme. L'homme représente la conscience et l'intelligence. Les sarcophages et les momies. Les sarcophages sont en bois. Les momies sont à l'intérieur. Les momies portent des bandelettes blanches. Les hiéroglyphes. Les Égyptiens n'utilisent pas de lettres. Ils utilisent des dessins pour écrire. Le titre est écrit en rouge. Le texte est écrit en noir. Okay. I just wanted to play the whole... Uh, can you hear me again? Yes. I just wanted to play the whole uh, video. Um, could I get some feedback now from uh, everybody? <clears throat> what did you think of that little recording? Did you understand it? What are we trying to introduce? Um, which words did you recognize? <laughs> Thierry. 
Okay, it's beautiful, it's clear, yeah. People who don't speak much French maybe, did you manage to follow the story or the presentation, I should say? Simple. Okay. But is it simple? Why is it simple? In what way? A very clear scaffolded, yes, I like that. Okay, introducing the vocab and then using the vocab in a context. Numbers in numbers, yeah. Yeah, I would agree, it's quite high level, <laughs> topic specific. Pictures, text and sound. Yes, eight years old, maybe older learners uh, um, would benefit of that, upper primary. Pictures, text and sound, yes, very visual, short sentences, but sentences. Okay, and the last person proper name seen in history classes, and that I think is also very important, of course. Um, you know, when we're talking about embedding, uh, the, the a primary teacher might be teaching uh, the, that topic in English, uh, and there are different ways for that teacher of organizing his or her class, primary school. Nadine, do you want to uh, maybe um, and this, you know, we're talking about teachers we know who, who have been using these resources in, in different ways. Uh, some people, how do they use the, these resources, Nadine, with, within their own topic? Um, well, it really has been used in a number of ways. So some teachers who have felt more confident, and again, Richard, you mentioned the fact that we're developing these resources for specialists, but also non-specialist teachers. So hence, having all the audio there, and uh, you'll see later on that we it comes in the form of PowerPoint as well with all the audio on it. So some of the less confident teachers might have first introduced the topic a bit in English and then presented um, the, the, the French material in order to consolidate what they've done. Um, some teachers who have been feeling more um, confident with the material have actually introduced it directly in French. So the topic was part of their uh, curriculum in English, but they introduced the basic. And again, um, I mean, you um, have all commented on the fact that uh, you have been able to recognize uh, many words, even if you're not um, French speakers. So we are very careful to pick um, words which are cognates um, and if they're not cognates to give uh, visual support so that learners can get it and, and um, not, don't struggle with the content. So it has worked both ways for introduction or for cons consolidation. Absolutely, absolutely. To me, the way when it works really well, embedding the 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 language will help the content, and the content feeds in, back into the language. So it's a win-win situation. Uh, Lisa, you said very important. The facts are shared. There's a balance between language and, and history, the, the the content and the language. Uh, Victoria says, I think this kind of lessons should be taught more often, even during face-to-face -face teaching. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, I think it would increase students' engagement. And I think that's something else we found, engagement, motivation. These resources were not designed for, designed for home learning, by the way, I'd, I'd like to say. We're using them now and teachers are using them mm -hmm. for home, home teaching and learning, but actually they were designed for face-to-face -face, um, teaching. Yes, and also just to finish on, on um, you know, the use of the resources, uh, the fact that some teachers, so because we've, um, we've organized the resource into little subsections that gave freedom for teachers to then go further and do a, a, a geography lesson and explore the null, for instance, or um, do something about uh, um, Sakara or, or Gizeh, or we have something about Tutankhamun, for instance. So there, there is room for expanding uh, within yeah. the topic. Yeah. Okay. 
let's move on. Uh, the second part link to this little video. We have a little quiz for you now. I'm laughing because, well, you'll see why. I'm going to share my screen. Nadine, you'll be the one reading the chat again. Okay. Uh, and so, l'Egypte antique présentation, petit quiz. OK, le quiz s'appelle Qui veut gagner le trésor des pharaons? OK, qui veut gagner le trésor Moi. des pharaons? <rire> OK, question numéro un, le Nil mesure. You're welcome to type your answer now. The quickest gets a point. The, the quickest five uh, get a point each. But I'll give you two options 670 km, 6670 km. Donc, 1600 Nadine. mètres, 6670, 6670, 15 kilomètres, B, 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 B
Absolutely. So another technique we use and we encourage teachers to, to ask their learners to create their own questions after they've completed the set of resources. In the quiz, we almost always make sure that we don't cover all, all types of questions so that um, then learners can create um, their own work and own questions and activities. Absolutely. Um, Nadine, what do we call it then? Uh, this is almost the elephant in the room, if I may say, when we're talking about camels. But, the, you know, when you mix a bit of content and a bit of language together, uh, could you, it be you, clear? Integrate, you integrate the two. <laughs> yes, could it be clear? So is anybody familiar with clear? And uh, Jane mentioned the, the ELAPS project before. Um, so so CLEAL, 10 points for someone who can tell us what CLEAL is. Stands for. Yes. I hope Thierry will be able to answer that. Content and... Good, I'm glad. <laughs> content, integrated. There's a nail missing. Yes, language, uh, uh, integrated learning, very good. Lisa wins. Le cocotier. Yeah, yes. so it's really something that we've been trying to, to do to support teachers, primary and secondary. This is more for primary, what you've been saying so far. But, you know, to try and, and integrate embed, we call it, but it's really put the content and the language um, together. Do you, should I show, do you have the activities, Nadine, on your machine and you share your screen or do you want me to share my screen? Uh, you could share your screen because I, for some reason I have a problem with minimizing okay. Okay. things. So if I share, I'm going to lose all the chat. Okay, because I was thinking you could bring a little animation on uh, the rights of the child as well. Uh, yeah. Just to explain that th this was also part of the francophonie, the emotional yes. check. So I'm going to share my screen again um, and open this. We've been listening, we've been uh, talking, hopefully. Uh, these are some of the activities that we provide as well uh, to the teachers. Les hieroglyphes. Okay, I won't ask you to do, to do that, but try and use these there to write your name. Again, yes. content, language. And also, so just, just using the, the symbols there, it really is a great way as well to um, go over revising the alphabet uh, and then describing what the shapes are like. So some animals, uh, some, so it's, you know, asking learners to say what, what it makes them think of and why these might have been chosen at the time um, uh, as a symbol. And so a lot about culture and Egyptian culture of the time as well. Okay, some classic closed te uh, text, the text at Roux uh, in French, so recycling this, this vocab. Les fiches d'identité des pharaons, I quite like that. And that's something maybe which uh, will interest even secondary colleagues here. Um, Richard, we are we st we're still seeing Les Hieroglyphes, just the first page at the oh, moment. OK. Well, I've been scrolling down, so I don't know why. Oh, I think my machine is about to crash, Nadine. No, no. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, it's, I'm stuck. OK. Can you see me now? Yes. Oh, OK. It's saying the Zoom meeting is about to <laughs> stop so, as long as it lasts. <laughs> so what I was trying to show you was uh, la fiche d'identité. Uh, so the, 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 the passport, if you want, for the pharaoh, one of the pharaohs. Um, something uh, which I've seen uh, done before, which I think goes is further down in this teach in the teacher's notes, is could you use le téléphone portable du passé? And so asking the learners uh, to tell us who would be following, so social media, who is following uh, Napoleon, since uh, Thierry mentioned Champollion. If the historical character was Napoleon, who's following Napoleon on uh, uh, Instagram, for example, could you write his Facebook uh, profile? 
um, could you uh, write down some of the text messages that Napoleon's been receiving uh, just before the, the whatever battle, for example. And this is also another wonderful way integrating social media, kind of technology, language and facts. Um, all of that together. Madrid sessions, yeah. Uh, anything else there, Nadine? Um, well, just to say again that, you know, so, some teachers might be um, a bit concerned about bringing too much new stuff and really the, the, um, the approach there is really to um, recycle a lot of known material within a new topic. So for instance, in this one, the fact that um, we ask learners, well, we, we, we present in a very simple way, one of the pharaohs, so namely here is Tutankhamun. Um, and we, we have the pharaoh presenting himself in very simple ways and then asking learners to recycle that to present another pharaoh, either pretending that they are the pharaoh using the, the I form or presenting the pharaoh in the, in the third person singular. But we're recycling, we're con constantly recycling and consolidating um, known vocabulary within a new topic. So it's, ne it's never completely new. And that's worked very well with, um, if, with very young, well, learners of all ages, but it's definitely worked well with young learners as well to make them confident enough to be able to be brought into a completely new topic but feel that they're familiar with a lot of the stuff and that's the exciting thing for us to see um, learners not shy to not afraid to go and explore uh, new resources Absolutely. Now's the time maybe to ask plenty of questions. Uh, please feel free to send us questions. I don't know, Nadine, if you've been able to. It'd be nice to show uh, one last video of the rights of the child. Uh, but um, Geraldine is asking, how many hours of French do children do at school using uh, power language? The answer, that's another, that's, I like the question because we go back to embedding in, in, in Scotland, but other schools, we work in Australia and, and Wales a lot. Uh, Jane, I can see you again. And we, as you know, we work in Wales uh, a lot, but the, the beauty is we don't, we don't do the, it's not the traditional, let's do two sessions of 30 minutes a week, which is fine, but it's actually, let's do a bit of French or Spanish or German every day. And whether it's the emotional check or it's the the, the, the after after dinner, lunch after lunch, um, or within the topic numeracy and so on, let's embed the language. And if on top of that you do one session a week, one thirty-minute session a week, job done. Can I? So please, yeah. Any other question? Questions? If you want to give me a link to. Anything I can show a video on your behalf. Oh, thank you, Helen. <laughs> it's Helen. <laughs> well, that, I think Nadine will be able to do that. Yes, as well. yeah. I'm uh, looking for the, the document that I want, and it should happen extremely soon. I was going to say uh, we had PISA results uh, over the past year, but fairly recently we had PISA results. If you go to the uh, LFE.net website, you'll see the PISA result for Scotland. And Scottish learners or learners in Scotland are in the top three countries in the world where uh, the, the tolerance to other culture and the acceptance of other culture and understanding of other cultures is the highest according to the OECD. Um, for Scotland, <laughs> it is uh, pretty amazing. And I would say part of it is linked to the, the language policy. The fact that we've, you know, it's about having confident learners, uh, linguists, uh, open to, I'm half Scottish, uh, open, hopefully open to, to the world. And that's what we're trying to do with French speaking countries and all the cultural and Spanish speaking countries, of course, and the cult, all the, these cultural resources. Let's try and, and get these learners confident, happy, and open to the world. Any other questions? Anything you've always wanted to know but never did ask? No, no more questions. So have you got one more? Uh, yes, yeah. To show us. So 
the one we'd like to show you, I would have liked to show you, but Nadine, I'm sure, remember to put the sound as well, Nadine. <laughs> we were, we, we it's, a, it's, oh yeah, here we go. Okay, if you show it, then we'll explain after that. Could you turn the volume up? Sounds great um, in Scotland. Yeah, you, you can you can actually share the sound afterwards. So if you just go up to the top, yeah, controls and go to more. Can you then, hear it now? No. If you go to more and then about four or five down, it says share computer sound. So that's one way of doing it. If you don't want to stop the share and start again. Okay. Or you could just read it to oh, just read yeah, it. French accent. Stop. Yeah. Oh, you can do the same file. <laughs> yes, exactement. J'ai le droit de rêver. It's a short one, this one. So okay. Can one. you explain what this was about then, Nadine? Um, so this one was part <laughs> of a... Is that very loud now? No, no, it's Thierry says, j'ai le droit de rire, oui, mais pas en classe. No. Um, In Scotland, Thierry, yes, you can. Yes, you are allowed. Um, we were asked to develop a set of resources on the rights of the child, um, which is an annual event, um, uh, International Day of the Rights of the Child in November each year. Um, so again, this was for young learners. And so we um, developed animation, short animations on the 10 fundamental rights. And we link that um, to um, so what Richard showed at the beginning. We actually link that topic to la francophonie. Um, again, to be able to present some very simple vocabulary around uh, children from the francophone world. Uh, and then for all the learners to go and explore uh, possible um, rights, human rights issues or um, things of concern, of particular concern for children in the various continents where uh, the French speaking world is represented. So it's just to show how we were able to link a number of topics and the emotional check was also part of that. So cross-curricular approach, uh, broad reaching in that, uh, for that one. Okay, thank you, Nadine. Can you see my screen now? Yes. And well, I hope it's not gonna crash. So people, if you have any more questions, please ask these questions. If you think of questions later on, you can get in touch with Nadine at powerlanguage.net or <laughs> Richard at powerlanguage.net. Am I going too fast? You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, in order to uh, get, get the resources, if you want us to send you the resources to share on a Google Doc, Google Drive the resources, then if you send an email to info at powerlanguage.net or maybe Helen, um, is there another way? Is that a good way of sharing the resources with participants? Yeah, um, yes, or, or anything. If you wanted to send me links at all to, um, to me, I, put, I normally put together a web page where we can put everything to do with this webinar. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And I can okay. do that by getting in touch with all of the participants you've registered via Eventbrite. So I've got that as a link. So anything you want to send to the participants, we could do that way. Well, that's we'll okay. That. So we'll do that. Uh, again, my computer's playing. Okay, good. I'm glad I'm back. So we, we'll do that. We can do both. Get in touch with us, or, but we'll send the stuff to, to Helen. Anything else? It's now 2059 hours, so you have 32 seconds. <laughs> can, you can unmute your mic as well. It's a, it's a nice and cozy group. So if there's anything you'd like to say, Geraldine, would a team of specialist French teachers be able to use your topics to make links? Oh, yeah. Children learning in class. I'd love to have a kind of table of time to put into my school. Yeah. So these resources are, are developed for specialists and non specialists alike. Absolutely. Get in touch with us if you want more information about these, about the stuff that we do. All good? Okay. Yeah, sounds like it. 
Okay, well, thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> thank you for coming at, you know, eight o'clock at night. It's, it's amazing. So it's, it's a real privilege to, to, to see you or to, to have, to you, have you there. Yeah. Yes. Um, Risha, we've just had a request in the chat for the Elapsed website. Yes. Which we need to add into the chat. Yes, yes. yes. So again, refi.net slash Elapsed. I will um, send that to you, Helen, as well. Uh, oh, this is a private <laughs> sent to everyone. Okay, muchas gracias. Take care, everybody. Yeah, you too. You yeah. too. It's, it's good well, to be. <laughs> it's been nice to have a, a hug now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thanks. Yes. I mean, people, people are saying it already, Risha, but Nadine, thank you very much, both of you, because it's great to see you know how how you can with a bit of imagination and help. Um, you've got to think about it right, but you can really get a lot of language learning into everyday um, yeah. situations, such as the emotional check. Yes. Yes. And then expand it to bring in the culture of, you know, la francophonie or, or yeah. wherever, um, as well as in specific top topics like the pharaohs. Absolutely. And I would say that as a practitioner myself, 10, 15 years ago, I wouldn't have dreamt of teaching the ancient Egypt, the, 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 the words that we saw in, in French, to young learners, to no. any learner. And that was a revolution for me as well, that I had to walk, take the walk, walk the walk, and to see it and to work with learners and wow. And to know it works, yes. Uh, yeah. And it's yes. a period of history they absolutely love. We, you know, we every year we do um, Joseph and his te amazing Technicolor drink, yeah. and the background is always to do with Egyptians and mummies, and yeah. it's something fascinating about it all, isn't there? So yes. you're really yeah. tapping into a lot there. It's great. Absolutely. Well, I really enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Okay, nice thank you, Helen. In the chat as well. Yeah, thank you, everybody. I can see Marie Dominique, Thierry, Nikki, Lisa. Anyway, but yeah, time to go. Not to bed, maybe time for a little glass of something. <laughs> <laughs> <Tizan>. <laughs> Sparkling water, tisane, yes. that's what yeah, I tisan, time, yes. time. Yes. <laughs> Would you like me to stop the recording now? That'd be great, yeah. Thank you, Helen. Thank Thank you. Okay. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, tout le monde. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, Lisa. <laughs>